All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. And as I've announced before, today we are going to be doing some GraphQL. Now, I've already done GraphQL um, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, like some time ago. And back then, it was quite annoying, to be honest, to, you know, set everything up and configure the resolvers and everything. And basically, GraphQL was in its infancy. Well, in 2020, it's actually incredibly easy to set this up. And I honestly not sure when I would not want to do that so long as I have the complex enough project that basically justifies using something like this, right? Uh, if you never heard about it, GraphQL is the query language for APIs. It is quite limited and very straightforward. Let's just put it this way. But it does allow you to make API a lot faster and nicer than what you typically would get from, say, REST APIs. Um, in yeah, like, I guess the probably one of the coolest aspect is the interactive console that allows you to play around with the data on the back end and then connect it to any client you want, basically. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build a very simple GraphQL API using Fastify, MongoDB, and um, a bunch of other tools, basically that will do something. I honestly don't know yet what, but we're going to figure it out as we go. So um, yeah, as as I said, uh, let's, I guess let's just start by bootstrapping the projects. I already created the folder here. I'm going to do npm init minus y and init the npm project. Uh, I probably should configure my defaults because I still haven't actually touched them, which is a bit unfortunate. But uh, anyway, so we are going to roll this thing and I have MongoDB installed here. So I'm just going to run it in a, in a background as a simple uh, thing. And now what we want to do is we want to create a server that will basically um, serve things. And I, I mean, I guess we don't really do we need that? Do we? Need, so here's the question. Do we need other things or do we just stick to GraphQL? We're going to figure it out. Prisma IO version two is going to take years to release. I think I've read about Prisma at one point and I remember looking at it uh, while evaluating it for our current project. But the problem is it seemed like, uh, at least from, you know, from my, uh, from my perspective, it looked like it would be a bit um, painful to customize it, but maybe I just, uh, maybe I, maybe I mix it up. Maybe it wasn't Prisma. But anyway, I think someone already created the proposal to look at Prisma as well. So we might, might do another stream on Prisma as well. But anyway, let's focus on GraphQL first. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up uh, Fastify as our um, core thing. So we're going to use Fastify as the basic server. Yeah, what? No, what? what is happening? Oh, I guess it refreshed the files and uh, decided to kill my file creation. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install Fastify. Where is my, there we go. There's the hello world example. We are just going to do that, right? So I'm just going to, I probably should make this a bit bigger so that you guys can see it. There we go. Will it try PostgreSQL? Uh, that is something I actually haven't used before. And I think I've read about it somewhere. PostgreSQL. Uh, let's have a look. So what is this? Powerful performance GraphQL API for Postgres. Uh, no, we are not going to be doing Postgres today. We are going to be doing uh, MongoDB. You can do Postgres totally, but I've um, like, you know, I just basically at, at our, at the current project I'm working on, we're, we're using Mongo and uh, the Mongo setup is incredibly easy right now with GraphQL. But uh, we might dive into that some other time. Why not? That's like, um, I think there's more than one tool that does work with um, uh, Postgres and GraphQL. All right. Anyway, uh, so we got, we declared the Fastify, we created the hello world and now we just run it. So let's make sure that it actually works, right? Um, I guess I should just do it in a more modular model, uh, manner, module exports. Um, so it's going to be start. And then I'm going to create the uh, index.js over here in the root folder. Um, so const start from require. I should probably start using ES modules natively in uh, Node.js at some point because they are here now, but I, I still haven't used them. All right, uh, we did that. We did that. Node index. So we should be able to go to localhost 3000 and we have our hello worlds. Um, cool. Okay, so this works. 
Now, here's the deal. So we now need to add MongoDB, right? So let's go ahead and add Mongoose. Uh, was it Mongoose or was it something? I think it was Mongoose, right? Uh, do, do, do. Yes, it was Mongoose, was it? I <laughs> Man, I am really bad at remembering the package's names. I think it was just Mongoose, right? Uh, read the docs, blah, blah, blah. Where's my getting started? Uh, Gitter, quick start guy. There we go. So npm is download. Okay, that was correct. That's good. Um, okay, yes, let's grab that. And uh, I'm just gonna go db over here. We're gonna create the index.js and we're gonna do our setup over here. Localhost um, graph, let's call it GraphQL example. So this is gonna be our database, why not? And um, what else do we want? I think, well, okay, first of all, I want const because uh, that's what I like. And da -da -da, yes, so we want some events. Um, I'm gonna grab this. So we're gonna connect, then we're gonna create a DB instance. And then, in, so on error, we're just gonna console error that. We don't care much about that. On bind, I'm gonna do exports is connected and this is gonna be a promise which is gonna resolve uh once on connection open so basically we're gonna have this promise that is gonna be resolved exactly once when we are um connected right so we could basically listen to that and we should probably do that immediately so i'm gonna kill all of that so we want um okay require db is what we want right and from db we want that is connected promise and before starting the database uh um, did i mistype it did i yes is connected so yes thank you very much we're gonna wait for the connection to database right and then if i start node.js now we should be able to yeah there we go so we are connected there is some deprecation warnings i still like it's it's <laughs> I still don't understand why they don't just migrate those properties to default ones. Like, as in, you know, you have to pass this option, you have to pass that option for Mongoose to work without deprecation notices, which is like, why don't you just use it by default and do a breaking change release? Um, so what was the message? Pass use unified topology. Okay, let's see. What is use unified topology? Warning on connection, uh, blah, 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 Mongo. Yeah, okay, okay, there we go. So this is another property over here. Means now we should not have any warnings. There we go, cool. So we are connected to database. We now have the server running, right? Let's, um, let's see, what do we, what do we wanna write in a database? Um, I'm just wondering. So we could do to-dos, that's like the obvious thing, right? But we want something that has graph like structure so we can actually use graphql with advantages basically right which is kind of makes sense um would want to just do the plain structure which is kind of boring so let me think we could what could we do we, we could do a notes app right so let's say we could do a notes app that has um collections and then notes that that sounds about good so let's do that. Um, all right, so we are, where's my schema? So let's go and create the kitty schema and we're gonna change it. I'm gonna create, I, you know what? Let's do it in one file, why not? So it's gonna be, so we're gonna have a collection schema, right? And it's gonna be collection name. It's gonna be um, notes, which is something we're gonna define later. And I think that's basically all we want here, right? And the second thing we want is to create this uh, model. So um, yeah, why not const? It's gonna be called collection. It's gonna be called, uh, let's call it notes collection. It's gonna be a bit more uh, explicit. It's gonna be notes collection schema. And there we go. So we defined, define collection. And then we're gonna do the same and define the, um, well, notes, right? To do's notes, whatever. Let's, let's just go with notes because it's more straightforward. Notes, okay. There's gonna be notes schema. Uh, let's just say it's gonna have name and it's gonna have um, body description. 
Yeah, I guess body would work, right? So we have a body string. Okay. Um, hey, Chris, welcome to the stream. Uh, nice to see you as well. And yes, welcome to everyone else. I am... <laughs> I had a bit of a bunch of a tough tasks today, so I'm spacing out a bit from all the work, but you know what, we're, we're gonna get through that, no problems. All right, so we got node schema, there we go. So we created nodes, we created um, collections. I'm gonna export that. So we're gonna export, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna copy the name so that we are consistent. I should really try to use, man, I should, <laughs> I probably should do a Node.js stream like on the ES modules because I never tried that and I really want to because the, the whole export stuff is really annoying in comparison to ES modules. But I have no idea how to use that so I'm not gonna dive into that now because we won't have enough time to, uh, well, do what we actually wanna do. Okay, um, right, so we want, you know what we want? We want relation now, right? So we want database, uh, am I? No, I'm not allowing the search, so there we go. We want object ID, um, da -da -da, types, yes, schema types, query population is what we want. Yes, we want this, right? We want to say that our collection has ar archive, uh, sorry, array of nodes that are of type object ID, and that should be mongoose schema types object ID and reference to the nodes, right? There we go. So now we have two collections, one of them in notes and the other one is notes collection. And um, I mean, I guess we could, do, do, we, do you guys want to first implement a REST API and then switch to GraphQL or do GraphQL right away? It's just, it, for me, it was quite amazing when I found out that I can basically throw away 80% of my code that I wrote for REST API and just use GraphQL instead which was kind of eye-opening, but um, I don't know if we want to spend time on that. But anyway, so the idea is that now that we have the nodes and, um, da -da -da, wait a second, so we got nodes collections and nodes, right? What you would typically do is you would say, okay, so we got Fastify, REST. Okay, why not? Let's do REST. So we're going to get our um, creation, right? So we're going to get... Uh, notes, which is going to be the post. I guess let's start with the collection. So we're going to post to the collection, request, reply. And um, this is going to be, uh, I mistyped requests. That's, yeah, that's the thing I do. Request body. So we're going to grab the body. And from body, we're going to say grab the name. What else did we have in our notes collection? Nothing. So just the name, right? So we. Basically say, okay, so now we have this. Okay, first of all, that's gotta be a sync. So now we're gonna say, okay, we got new collection. That is gonna be new nodes collection. And we're gonna give it our name. And we're gonna say new collection save, right? So we gotta wait that. So we save it. And then once we saved it, we basically return new collection to object. So we just return the nice clean JSON. Um, theoretically, that should do it. Uh, I wonder if I should just, uh, I was wondering how should I do it? Like we could all be, we could obviously use like curl and stuff, right? So uh, no, that's not, uh, there we go. There's data. You can just say name tests 3000 and we're going to send it to collection. I think it should uh, unsupported media type. Oh, okay. Once the JSON you want the JSON stuff, right? Um, oh man, that's a bit annoying. Do we have, is there, I remember someone was saying that there's a good extension for like um, HTTP requests in HTTP client in VS code. So maybe this is what we want. Yes, yes, get body. Okay, no, 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 not, not the node mode. I'm talking about some sort of extension where, you know, I could easily test the, the requests inside of the uh, VS code itself without like writing curl and stuff. Get posts date review. Um, eh. Oh, it has HTTP. Wait, <laughs> is it like literally HTTP? What does it do? It seems like it just, um, oh, okay. It's just a wrapper around HTTP. Okay, that's not very helpful. 
Check out Insomnia otherwise. Insomnia. Is that a standalone thing? Insomnia. Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be something else. Insomnia Rest Client. There we go. Okay, you gotta download that. I am too freaking lazy to do that. That looks actually quite nice. Hmm. Maybe I should. I don't want to install. Does it have a portable version? Pricing plugins. Okay. Uh, charging for HTTP client is very bold. Uh, e tweet. Oh, okay. So it's like data sync. Okay, right. Sure. That's that's fine. Do we have a portable thing? We don't have a portable binary, so uh, that's a no for me. I do not want to install stuff. You know what? We're just um, curl JSON post. We're just gonna use curl because I'm too damn lazy to do any of that. So this uh, H content, yeah, there we go. That's what we want, right? So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm just gonna create a new tab, post it in there. Post requests with name, it's gonna be test collection. And we got that 3000, we, were we on 3000? Uh, we are on 3000, indeed, okay. And uh, it's gonna be in a collection, right? I think we did it on the collection endpoint. There we go. So this should create a new collection and uh, there we go, cool. So that's fine. So now let's do the get collections, right? Um, testify get collection. I guess collections would make more sense because it's more resty. Sync request. Reply, okay. And then I just, uh, I mean, I, I don't really need all of that, right? So what I need is, I can say collection, uh, no, 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 console. I'm, there's already so much in my fingers that I basically type console every time I start typing anything on C. Notes collection, find. So we just need all of them. And then we need, uh, oh God, I always, like they have this, Mongoose now has this nice, Utility, it's in docs, um, that allows you to convert the query to plain JSON right away, but it's not plain, it's not lean, it's, was it lean? It was lean. I always, like, it's it's this weird word, it's not, not just like SJSON or whatever, like something that makes sense. That lean thing is constantly forget that. <laughs> okay, get collections, cool. Um, let me think. So we create collection, I'm just gonna copy paste that and Essentially, in this case, all we want is that, right? So this will give us uh, not found, right? Um, collections, there we go, should probably type correctly. And I should restart my server. Whoops, nope, node index. What is Fastify exactly? Never heard of it. Uh, it's basically more modern Express.js with better API and nicer plugin system. Uh, what? Come on. I said collect. There we go. Okay. So it returns our collections. That's great. Uh, and it's also a lot faster than Express.js. And um, I personally like love the plugin system it has because it makes uh, composing APIs very, very nice and doing stuff like authorization just a breeze. But, uh, you know, um, just check it out if you never heard of it. It's really great. Uh, it's my favorite thing to use actually for the servers in Node.js. Right, so now we need to create um, notes, right? So, okay, still should be post. Notes, I guess if we would do it in a proper rest way, what you would actually do is you would do something like this, right? You would post to collection with a specific ID and in this case it's gonna be a request uh, params, I think, right? We're gonna have ID and then we're gonna say, okay, so we're gonna create a new note that is gonna be new note. Name is gonna be this, body is gonna be body. Body and um, why did I design the schema in this way? I don't think we actually want, probably gonna be easier to link them the other way, right? Just do it this way. So uh, it's gonna be collection. No, okay, we want collections because one, no, no, okay, you know what, let's not overcomplicate that. Let's just say one node can have one collection. Okay, and uh, that doesn't matter. Right, and this is gonna be nodes collection. There we go, like this. This, this is better. And then collection is gonna be our ID, right? So this is it. 
Okay, new node save, new node two objects. There we go. Okay, so we now uh, have to save some node in there. Da -da 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 -da. Name, uh, okay. Test nodes body is gonna be test body. And then collection is gonna be our ID that we're gonna grab from the terminal. So there's our test collection. Gonna throw that in here. And oh, no, we actually don't need right. I don't need to throw it in a body. It's the parameter, right? All right, right, right. And uh, notes, right? So we have to do that. Uh, check Huma, Humao REST client for VS Code. Uh, okay, let's, let's see. What is that? REST clients. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think I already looked at it. But I mean, I still have to write everything by hand, right? It's like... What's the big difference from doing the same thing with curl? <laughs> like, I mean, I get it. Maybe it's nice to have it in VS Code, but I'm totally fine with doing it with curl. Okay, I'm just going to stick with curl for now. Um, unexpected token. What? Oh, right, it's JSON. I forgot that I have to properly structure it. Did I actually restart my server? I should probably... Collection may not be used as schema path name. What did I... What did I screw up? Wait a second. Um, notes collection. What do you mean collection? Oh, it doesn't like the collection. Hmm. Okay. Um, why doesn't it like collection? That's interesting. Path may not be used as schema path name. Interesting. Why? That's the first. Okay, but I never called anything collection, so let's call it. I don't know. Um group or something would that work this is a group <laughs> you like group okay uh get already declared on the roots blah 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 okay so i guess it doesn't like oh right 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 because i declare the same get again find right you know what let's just write the get as well because why not so we do that collection i know we actually want note it should be notes. Notes fine. So that group is our ID lin. And let me rename this to notes. There we go. Okay. So I think now it should start. All right. And now we should be able to run this. Error. Unexpected token. What did I? Oh, right. Blah. Come on. I fixed it here, but did not copy it. All right. There we go. So it actually created our notes. So now we can curl this URL to get the notes for our collection. Works perfectly fine. So, you know, this is, let me just commit that, I guess, because this is, this is the very, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not projects BXJS. Um, where's my GraphQL? There we go. We get, okay. First of all, Echo node modules get ignore. Okay. Mets basic REST API setup. Okay. So got this. So this is essentially a very stupid way of setting up REST API, right? You would have to the more entities you have, the more endpoints you'll have to describe, the more logic you'll have to write. And 90% of the time the logic you will write is like, okay, take these parameters from the body, then throw them into the object, then save it, then return the object, right? Same goes for the finds. Uh, sometimes they have filters, sometimes not. It's just like, find me this stuff and return it, which makes it very annoying, to be honest. And a lot of this busy work is unnecessary, right? You want to focus on writing this custom business logic. A majority of time when you do REST, this is not what you do. And that's where GraphQL is uh, actually quite damn awesome. So there is a tool called GraphQL Compose that, um, so um, as I said in the beginning, one of my complaints was that if you wanna do GraphQL or if you wanted to do GraphQL, right? One of the problems was that uh, you still have to write those resolvers, right? So you define your GraphQL schema, you define your API, and then you write resolvers and all of that was manual and all of that was annoying because we already have a schema defined. Like it is Mongoose schema, but it's still a schema that describes, you know, what properties does the uh, entities have, what kind of relations do they have, and we already have all of that. So why do I have to go again and, you know, describe it again for GraphQL just to make it work? 
Well, the good thing is that now the tooling is mature enough to, well, do it for you essentially, right? So there's this awesome tool called GraphQL Compose and it has a bunch of plugins, including GraphQL Compose Mongoose, which basically does that um, for Mongoose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the tool uh, in our repo. I probably should stop it first. So we already have Mongoose, so I don't need that. So we're gonna install GraphQL, we're gonna install GraphQL Compose and we're gonna install GraphQL Compose Mongoose. So this is the Mongoose plugin, right? And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new GraphQL folder that is gonna hold all of our GraphQL setup, right? And uh, I'm gonna use this Node 8 version of it that works for modern Node versions. Uh, again, I probably should not use import here because I have no idea how it works in Node.js. Again, I should really do the Node.js stream for modern ES modules because I actually want to learn that myself. Anyhow, uh, we got, yeah, we got two things. So we got the compose with mongoose thing and we got the schema composer that does the uh, real work. Now we are going to be doing the whole setup for mongoose today, but the cool thing is that the graphical compose has a lot more plugins and you can write your own that you can wrap around, well, just about everything, to be honest. And they are really easy to use. So you define the schema, you define whatever schemas you want, you define models, right? And then you convert them to GraphQL. So we take our existing Mongoose models and convert them to GraphQL pieces. I'm gonna leave the customization options empty as is for now. Uh, I don't think I actually use them so far. Uh, but then again, you know, our case is relatively straightforward at the moment. So maybe I will have to do that at some point. Next thing you do is you import your documents and you say, okay, so we're going to have this notes, um, collect, uh, come on, notes collection TC, right? So it's going to be created from notes collection. And then we're going to have notes TC, which is going to be composed from the notes. Right, so I'm gonna separate them a bit because there's a few more steps that you have to go through. So the next step is you have to add your resolvers, the fields to the schema composer. Uh, sorry, schema composer, right? Is what you what you correctly pronounce it. So I'm gonna copy that. Uh, we don't need, we have to do that at the very end. And this is gonna be module exports GraphQL schema. So the resulting thing is this GraphQL schema that you can just throw into your GraphQL server and it will magically work, which is freaking amazing to be honest. Right, uh, now, so we, we have this nose TC, right? And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna replace all of that with nose TC. So we basically you define the queries and mutations that can run over this collection with specific names. Again, this is says users, but we're gonna say collection right? Uh, collaborations, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so it says user here, it should say uh, bleh, collection, notes collection. All right. So let's have a look at that. So we say that schema composer query should add fields. And this is the description of fields. So this is basically one to one mapping. Collection by ID is going to map to find by ID inside of mongoose uh, or mongoose, I guess, right? In this case, Find by IDs will run find by IDs. So find multiple items by IDs. Collection one, let's just call it collection is gonna use find one. Collection many, let's call it collections, will find many for us. Collection count will count them. Collection connection is, I honestly don't know because I haven't used it. And pagination is a special case where you wanna paginate stuff. Okay, and then the same goes for mutations. So you can create one, create many, update by ID, update one, update many. Again, you know, if you don't want uh, to update or remove many, let's say we only want to allow updating or creating one at a time, we're just gonna leave that and I'm gonna kill those at all, right? So we're gonna only allow mutations for this collection, um, specifically using this ID or creating one, right? Now, I guess we don't actually need update one. We just want update by ID and remove by ID. So we don't care about other updates. Okay, uh, and then we do the same, same setup for notes. So I'm just gonna copy that, right? Throw it in here and say, okay, so we got 
this stuff, replace that with notes, and then we got collection, replace that with notes. Uh, no, wait, that should be note, right? And here's the question, do we need, yeah, so I think we also need to create one update or remove by ID, and that's basically it. So once we did that, once we added it to schema composer, we just say build schema and export that GraphQL schema that then we can use in our GraphQL setup. So we no longer need any of that. We honestly no longer need index page, but I'm just gonna leave it for the sake of it. What we do need is the GraphQL server actually. So what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna say GraphQL Fastify because there was, um, I think it was Apollo. Yes, Apollo server Fastify. So we're gonna use that. And uh, we're just gonna install that. npm install Apollo Fastify. I mean, you can use it with ExpressJS if you want to. You can use it with any server that supports um, GraphQL. And I think that's like 90% of them. So this shouldn't be a problem with this uh, year, basically. I'm gonna do that. And then we do Apollo server. And then, so to -da 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 -da, run the server. So let's do it here. I mean, we can do it in try, why not? That. So what, wrong, okay. So create GraphQL server, let's call it uh, GQL server so that it's a bit more um, unambiguous, I guess. And then what we need to do is we need to just register it with our app. So we wait for connection and let's say fastify register and then listen, that's, that's literally it. But uh, okay, I forgot to actually connect the schema. Right, so we actually no longer need this stuff, but we do need require um, GraphQL, right? So we need our da -da 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 GraphQL schema. And I think if I remember correctly, it was the schema property. I might be mistaken. Let me just have a quick look. Apollo server search, um, da -da -da -da. Let me, I, just, I just need some dogs because I don't remember the property name. Um, defining a schema, schema basics. No, where's my API reference? There we go. So it takes, so we don't have type devs, we don't have resolvers, we don't have context, or we don't need it right now, I guess. There is a schema directives. Was it schema directives? There's a schema, there we go. So it is a schema, okay, cool. Right, so theoretically that should be it for the setup. So once I start node index, if I didn't screw anything up and I apparently did, Right, because I renamed it here, but not here. There we go. I should fix it. Uh, we should now have like a full on GraphQL endpoint. Uh, so if I go localhost 3000 slash GraphQL, we should see a playground and uh, we should be able to write our queries with suggestions, right? So I should say collection name and this will give us all the collections and I should be able to do notes name and what else do we have body and group which will give us the notes right now there's the problem so number one we want to actually have a link to the group here not just you know right now this is the mongo id which is not very helpful so we want, we want to actually be able to query it like this which in this case will produce an error saying hey you don't actually have that link right so let us go ahead and define that link. So the thing is that GraphQL Compose allows you to define a relation. And I probably should allow uh, JavaScript to um, enable this search here, relation between types, there we go. So once you create the type, you can define a relation between types. And I think there was an easier example somewhere here, uh, maybe it wasn't a GraphQL Mongoose um, examples or something, but there is a really simple way to define those relations. And to do them, okay, discriminators is not something we want. Where was it? Come on now. Uh, custom fields is yes, that stuff, relation. Yes, there we go. So, okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna copy this relation from here. We're gonna go into GraphQL and we're gonna say that, okay, so here's our nodes TC, right? Uh, have a relation and relation is gonna be, what was the group name, right? So we're gonna, I mean, in this case, we can actually have a, we can leave it as is, we're gonna have a collection name, which makes more sense in my opinion. And in this case, it's gonna be no TC collection, find by ID, we only want one of them. 
and then ID is going to be source and source is going to be we will just going to take the group right and we're going to grab that group from here specifically find by ID so this is I mean I can just probably kill these comments because they don't make sense here so now we define this additional relation so define relation between nodes and collections right and if I restart our server I probably should start using node mode now but you know what I'm lazy okay if we refresh that we're gonna get a new schema here so group will still be string because we left it like this but now we have this collection and now I can actually ask for a name of it and we have our collection resolution here which is uh, kind of great right so this is literally all it takes to establish our relations and allow GraphQL to query nested things. Now let's do the reverse thing. So we have the collection, right? But let's imagine um, we want to actually know all the nodes that it has. So it's going to be a bit trickier. And yes, you can also do that. So we can define a new property. It's going to be called nodes. It's going to um, nodes TC and find by um no it's not going to be fine by ids it is actually going to be find many right and um ta -da 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 -dum. hell if i remember so i think we want basically group to be source id so we map the group to the id and then the only thing we want to select is ID. i think if i didn't screw anything up whoa no 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 don't install anything just start a server um no cc did i oh 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 um, i'm adding it to the wrong thing and i'm also adding it in the wrong place because we have not yet initialized the notes collection right okay Between collection and notes is what we want here okay i think if i didn't screw anything up that should give us a way to say okay i want notes and they should have a name and it actually works so there you go as easy as that now the cool thing is that it's just as easy to extend it for any additional functionality you want like adding authentication adding or appending user to specific creator requests so for example if we have authentication set up and we want any uh, node created to be attached to a specific user we could wrap all of that we could pass the user through the context in our server. So you can define a context property here that will have access to the current request. You grab the user from there, pass it to context, then handle it over here and write it to one of the properties done. It is insanely easy to do that. And essentially the whole setup just comes down to setting up the schema that you have in your database and then writing this tiny additional either relations or specific logic where you need to you know, do something like user handling and uh, that's basically it that's how easy it is to set up graphql in 2020 uh, okay let me just uh, convert um api to graphql using graphql uh, what was the name of it again compose right right there we go graphql compose there we go okay um yeah that's <laughs> that's actually all i wanted to show because i was extremely surprised as to you know how easy it is to do something like that in in 2020 and again you know i had my experience like a couple of years ago and writing all of those resolvers by yourself was annoying as hell especially knowing that you already have a schema but yeah it's very easy now very convenient and uh, if you have a complex enough structure that warrants graphql this is probably the easiest way to set this up i mean again you know if you don't need a lot of custom logic stuff like prisma or um what was it called hasura is probably the way to go but if you want full control over how your queries are run what is going on um, in you know being able to easily extend the business logic this is incredibly easy to set up and really flexible right um that's basically from my side so if you guys have any questions suggestions uh something is not clear feel free to throw them into the chat right now if not we can just uh, wrap it up here how the hell am i not logged in um no no, no let me just uh, do that i'm just gonna create a repo and oh come on really right okay let me grab my phone uh while you're thinking on the questions i'm gonna go ahead and where is my authentication app there we go 
I'm going to create a wrapper and push everything in there. But if you guys don't have any questions, then, well, we can just uh, wrap it up here. Where's my GitHub? Is it GitHub? Yes, this is GitHub. So there we go. That looks good enough. Cool. Okay. Uh, new repo. What did I call it? GraphQL Mongoose example. Oh, yeah. I probably need a readme file as well. So example of setting up GraphQL API using Mongoose and GraphQL Compose. Right. Um, we need a readme. That's a really good point. Readme MD. I am going to be very lazy as usual and just copy it from one of the older repos. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If not, then uh, yeah, it was basically that's that's it from my side. Whoa, no, 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 don't copy all of that. So example of setting up um, GraphQL copy with um, Mongo, uh, I guess Mongoose and um, bleh, I cannot type. Come on, really graph UL compose. There we go. Fine. I'm creating a simple graph. Yeah. Maybe if I could type, that would be really nice. Simple GraphQL API using Mongoose and GraphQL compose. There we go. How did I still not update the um the link? I should I should revisit my older repositories at one point and update all the links and make sure that they are actually correct. But um, yeah, that, that seems to be very hard. <laughs> GraphQL in 2020. Right, da -da -da -da. I'm showing how to... Da -da -da. I'm just gonna be la very lazy. I'll probably create some sort of a generator like someone suggested last time. Right, so GraphQL compose is what we want. And the other thing we want is mongoose, right? That is too many O's. So this is mongoose and we have a GraphQL compose. There we go. Okie dokie, that looks fine. Get at get commit at readme file. There we go. I think we're basically done here. Doesn't really seem like you guys have any questions or suggestions. So that was a um, short-ish stream, but I hope you learned something new. If you have, if you still have any questions or suggestions, uh, join our Discord and just uh, you know throw your stuff in there. I have seen Prisma, but I have not tried it. You are already a third person today, I think, to mention it. So I think we are gonna try it at some point and I'm probably gonna, uh, maybe next week, maybe in a in couple of weeks, I'm uh, gonna do a live stream, uh, trying out Prisma and seeing how exactly that works. So we got what, MongoDB, Mong, uh, whoa, 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 what is happening? Mongoose, um, Graph, gra come on, GraphQL, GraphQL Compose, um, Fastify, I guess. There you go, that's probably enough, right? Okay. I think that about covers it. So, yeah. So, as usual, the code is on GitHub. Uh, the video VOD will be available immediately on both YouTube and Twitch. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to join Discord server or throw them into the comments on YouTube. I will reply as soon as I can. Um, that's basically it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I guess, you know, stay safe, don't get sick, uh, self-isolate and everything. And I see you on Wednesday for the BXJS weekly stream. Maybe I'll see you on Friday for the Doom Eternal release stream because this game looks absolutely bonkers and I feel like I just have to stream that because it's just too good. And uh, yeah, that's basically it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching once again. Have an awesome rest of the week and I see you next time.